This section that we are moving into, I will begin, but this next section of Daniel, chapters 10, 11, and 12, really is all about one vision. It's one vision. So in a sense, I'm doing the introduction, and uh, Jeremy Geek will be sharing next week, where he gets more deeply into the nitty-gritty of what this vision is all about. So this vision starts, friends, with um, the announcement by this angelic being, whether it's an angel or the Lord, we're not sure. It starts about this announcement about the fact that there is a great war that is coming. Friends, as we begin this, we need to recognize one fundamental truth, and that is that we are currently at war. We are engaged in a spiritual battle. Amen? There is a spiritual battle. We are reminded in Ephesians chapter 6, these profound truths. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power, not your own. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. And friends, so often we have the wrong focus. We think that it is. It's not. It is not against f flesh and blood. Our struggle is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And in this vision, Daniel takes us there. So let's read these amazing words. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel. The word of God came to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Now we are reminded way back when, in the early chapters of Daniel, that when Daniel was taken into captivity, he was given this Persian name, Belteshazzar. And the message given, the revelation given, was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message was given to Daniel in a vision. And Daniel shares, at that time I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I grieved for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips. And I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. So as I said, these chapters relate to a single vision about a time to come. The Word is revealed. The Word is a revelation. And it is true. And it speaks of a great war. And now, I'm not quite sure whether Daniel was mourning and then had the vision, or whether he was mourning because of the vision, but certainly Daniel is profoundly impacted to the point where he fasts and humbles himself and prays for this period of three weeks. So let us not forget that we are at war. But though we might be at war, praise the Lord, we are not alone. We are not alone. We, as believers, we are on the winning side. We are on the Lord's side. And so, verse 4. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, it's interesting how precise this is. The very date is given. The place is given. I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of the finest gold around his waist. His body was like chrysolite, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. The men with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So something pretty powerful is happening. 
And so I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and I, as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. So there is this question, who is this? And there is debate. Uh, I am not entirely sure myself. It's either an angel, definitely, or the, the, the question is, is this the Lord Jesus? Before he became flesh and dwelt among us, is this one of those appearances where Jesus manifests himself? Now, we are not clear on this. But certainly it is profound what is happening to Daniel as he describes what he sees. It is shattering. It is, it is life-changing for him. This is a person of immense power and majesty. That is certainly clear. I am reminded certainly as we consider the fact that we are in this battle the fact that we are not alone. We are not alone, praise God, in the battles that we face. And I'm reminded of these words that Paul writes, that, and they are wonderful words, aren't they? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? Do you believe this? If God be for you, who, who can be against you? Not all the powers of darkness can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? But friends, if we are not in Christ, and I'm using this phrase purposefully, if you are not in Christ, heaven help you. Because that is the only place where salvation comes from. It comes from the loving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. If God be for us, who can be against us? And the answer is no one. Not all of humanity, not all of government, not all the powers of darkness can be against us because we are held secure by the Lord. Amen? And that is the question. Are you in this place? In a world that is turned upside down, in a world that we sometimes struggle to understand. The only place where we have a firm foundation is in Christ. I think of that hymn where it says these wonderful words, the church's one foundation, only foundation, is who? Jesus Christ our Lord. That is our foundation. We are in a war, but praise God, we are not alone. We are not alone. And more than that, friends, we are esteemed, we are loved, we are precious. I want to apologize for the fact that I've got the text fairly uh, closely packed up on the screen. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm wanting to try and highlight one or two things. And if I try and spread it all out, it, it isn't quite as clear. And you'll see that on the, on the slides to come. So, I just want to read a fairly extensive section of this chapter that we are looking at because it is profound what is happening here. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. Now remember Daniel had, had fallen over. He'd fell and fallen into a deep sleep. He'd been so overcome by the power of this vision. The others who were there didn't see the vision but fled in terror. And the hand of the angel or the hand of the Lord touches him and sets him trembling on his hands and knees. And he said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed. Isn't that beautiful? You are greatly loved. Consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he had said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. 
I remember many, many years ago, I had a, um, I was going to say a girlfriend, but a very good female friend. Not a girlfriend, not in a rom- romantic sense, but a good, a good female friend. And, and I remember talking with her about the Lord and about prayer. And, and I remember, vividly remember her saying to me, Shaki, when I pray, I just feel that my, my prayers hit the ceiling and just bounce back. Never forget that. Yeah, I just feel that my prayers hit the ceiling and, and bounce back. That God is unconcerned. God does not hear. But here is the truth of it. From the moment, from the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. Your words were heard. So friends, your prayers, every one of them is heard. Regardless of of how you feel or how you think, the Lord hears your prayers. So you you and I are, are in a sense, touched by the hand of God. We are lifted up when we are bowed down. We are told, do not be afraid. And our prayers are heard. We are precious. But the prince, what was the reason for the delay? There, here is this spiritual battle that we speak of. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came and helped me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now, I've come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future For the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. It reminds me, does it not, of Isaiah. When Isaiah sees the Lord and he himself is overcome. Because he recognizes the fact that he is a man of unclean lips, living among a, among a people of unclean lips. And, and as I says, my eyes have seen the Lord. There is this, this image where, where the, the majesty of God, his train fills the temple. And you have these angelic beings crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of his glory. And so Daniel bows with his face to the ground and was speechless. And then once again we have a second time where the one who looked like a man, so is it the son of man who is Jesus perhaps? The one who looked like a man touched my lips Echoing Isaiah where the angel took the coal from the altar and touched the lips of Isaiah. But here, the angel or the Lord himself touches the very lips of Daniel. Not just a coal. He touches his lips and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of this vision. My Lord, and I am helpless. Friends, it's so true that when it comes to the great things of this world, and we are, in a sense, helpless. We are probably more helpless than Daniel, who was pretty high up in the Persian kingdom at this time. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me. And gave me strength. So this is the third time. It's just remarkable. Do not be afraid, O man, highly esteemed. That too is repeated. And he said, peace, shalom, be strong. Be strong now, be strong. This double emphasis. And friends, I believe that's a word for us. We need the shalom, the peace of God in our lives, do we not? Do we not need the word of encouragement? I am with you, so be strong. 
You know, that is a phrase that echoes throughout the Bible so much. We think of, of, of Joshua at the very start of, of his commissioning by the Lord. And, and, and we have this shared so often. What does the Lord say? Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. And then it's re-emphasized. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all my law and I will prosper you. And here we have it again to Daniel. Be, be strong, be strong. This amazing, this amazing thing, the God's touch upon Daniel. A hand touched me. His lips are touched. Yeah, he was touched and given strength. Friends, we need the touch of God in our lives, do we not? You and I. Lord, come. We want an intimate relationship with you, not distant. I remember, and I've shared this one before, Bette Midler who was an actress and a singer. She sang a song that was, became very famous. And, 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 and the words of the song went, and I'm not going to sing it, uh, I, I, I hasten to add. Yeah, from a distance, God is watching. You remember that song, some of you? What a load of nonsense. That is not biblical. We believe in a one who is Emmanuel, who is God with us, not from a distance. God didn't stay far away. God became flesh and dwelt among us. And when God, on the day of Pentecost, poured out the Holy Spirit upon us, it's that we might not be orphans, abandoned, but I will send the Holy Spirit to come and be with you, to be your counselor, to be the one who comes alongside of you. And so, friends, the Lord is near you. For those of us who believe, He is within us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so He's touched, and He's encouraged, and He's strengthened. There is God's touch, but there are the Lord's words, the words of affirmation. You are highly esteemed, Daniel. You are greatly loved. And friends, that's not a word just for Daniel, but it's a word for every single one of you. Everyone who hears or watches this online, it's a word for me. It's a word for everyone that the Lord loves you. So we see that in chapter 9 where Daniel is told that he's greatly loved. We see this here in chapter 10 where he is, it's emphasized twice that he is greatly loved. In fact, it reminds me of the words of Gabriel to the Virgin Mary that you are highly esteemed. You are greatly loved. And it's amazing how, how God affirms Daniel before he knows the full extent of the vision. Because he needs to know where he stands. He needs to know who holds him. Just like you and I do. So before we face the obstacles of life, the fact is we stand on the foundation that is Christ. He is the one who holds us. He is the one who loves us. I want to read you a poem. Um, uh, it's using slightly older language, I suppose, but it is a beautiful poem. It speaks of a violin. It was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it was scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin. But he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good folk, he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, a dollar, now two, only two? Two dollars, who'll make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice. Going for three, but no. From the room, far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up the strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as angels sing. The music ceased, 
And the auctioneer with a voice that was quiet and low said, What am I bid for the old violin? As he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars? Who'll make it two? Two thousand? Who'll make it three? Three three thousand once, three thousand twice, three thousand and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some exclaimed, We do not quite understand what changed its worth. And the answer came, it was the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with soul out of tune and battered and scarred by sin is auctioned cheap by the thoughtless crowd, just like that old violin. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Isn't that beautiful? Friends, what makes you priceless is the touch of the master's hand. God's touch upon your life. You are made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. He has died for you. He has paid the ultimate price for you. He loves you. And he wants you to be secure in him. Friends, God's word matters, does it not? We stand on the word of God, the word of truth. Do not be afraid, O man, highly esteemed. Peace. Be strong now, be strong. And I'll put that in there so we can get the flow of things. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. And so he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. Friends, there are these world powers that are out there. Persia, Greece, and behind them stand spiritual powers. Think about the great kingdoms of our current age. What stands or who stands behind them? Very often it's not the Lord, but there are these spiritual forces of darkness that are at work. But first, verse 21, I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. There is that key word about truth. When we have so much in our world that is, that is just a lie, where truth becomes relative, you know, truth is not absolute. No, no, no. When it comes to the truth of God, it is absolute. And then these words, no one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. And in the first year of Darius the Mede, I took up my stand to support and protect him. Isn't that interesting that Darius, even though he was not a believer, was supported and protected by this angelic being or indeed the Lord. Because a plan of God needed to be fulfilled. And part of that was the return of the Jews back to the promised land. Do you remember that? So even a pagan king was used by God and protected by the Lord. So as I've said, there are authorities behind human empires. The prince of Persia resisted for 21 days. Michael comes to help. We speak of the prince of Greece, and that's the rising up of these, these powers. Persia will decline, and Greece will take over much of that part of the world. But through it all, friends, these words emphasize, do not be afraid. Twice we have that in verse 12 and verse 18. Do not be afraid. And then this beautiful, beautiful emphasis in verse 19, be strong now, be strong I'm reminded of other conflicts we have in the Bible and things we don't often see. You know, we don't see with spiritual eyes. We often just read what the newspaper says. 
but we don't look behind the story just to hear what is God saying to us. And I'm reminded of this wonderful account where, where the Arameans decided to come and capture Elisha the prophet because he was telling the king what the enemy was going to do. And so the Arameans wanted to come and take Elisha out. And so, and so the Arameans surround Elisha and, and Elisha says, do not be afraid to his servant who thinks the end has now come. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha's servant probably thought, thought the old guy had lost it a bit. And then Elisha prays that he's, the servant's eyes might be open. And he looks and he sees the hills. And he just sees yeah, horses and chariots of fire surrounding the enemy. Friends, if God be for you, who can be against you? We need not be afraid because those who are with us are far more than those who are with the enemy. Amen? And again, in the New Testament now, for though we live, these are the words of Paul, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. We do not. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. So that is why I want to encourage you to come and pray. Come along tonight and let's pray. Our our, our country and our world live in unprecedented times. Let's pray. Because our weapons are not the weapons of this world. They are spiritual. On the contrary, says Paul, they have divine power, hallelujah, to demolish strongholds. So as we close, we are in a great war, you and I. We are in a war. But you are not alone. If you've given your life to Jesus, you are not alone. No, far more than that. You are precious. You are highly esteemed. You are loved. And as we go through life, friends, let us be guided and upheld by the living word of God. Spurgeon had this to say when it comes to the word of God. I would recommend that you either believe God up to the hilts. In other words, you absolutely believe Him. Or else do not believe at all. Make up your mind. It's one or the other. Either fully believe or fully do not believe. Don't try and sit somewhere in the middle. And he goes on. Believe, says Spurgeon, believe this book of God, the Bible, and every letter of it, or else reject it. There is no logical standing between the two. Either accept the word or don't, but there is nowhere in between. It's one or the other. Be satisfied with nothing less than a faith that swims in the deeps of divine revelation. A faith, he says, that paddles about on the edge of the water is a poor faith at best. It is little better than a dry land faith. In other words, no faith at all and is not good for much. So friends, let us believe the word of God. Amen. Every letter in it. And let us live as the people who are on the Lord's side. We are not alone. We are loved. We are affirmed. And again, as we close these words, shalom, peace, the peace of God be yours. And whatever life is throwing your way, be strong, friends. Be strong. Why? Because you are highly esteemed. The Lord loves you and he holds you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this this amazing revelation. Thank you, Lord, that your love for Daniel and your regard for him is no less than for us. Lord, you do not have favorites. So thank you, Lord, that your, your presence is with us that the Holy Spirit is among us. 
that you are the God who defends us. You are our strong tower. You are our shield. As we read earlier, if you be for us, who can be against us? Lord, we do not want to stand against you. We want to embrace you. We want to, like Daniel, humble ourselves before you. So, Lord, won't you come and just reach out and touch us? Lord, where we are weak, strengthen us. Where there is sin, Lord, oh, forgive us. Where we have lost hope, Lord, just lift us up that we might have a profound hope in the living God. Thank you that we are not alone. Thank you that we do not lack resources. We have all the resources of heaven. And thank you that we are greatly loved, each one. That we are highly esteemed. And so we receive your shalom, Lord, your peace. Come and strengthen us that we might be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Because apart from you, Lord, we can do nothing. And so we worship you. Thank you for this precious word. We glorify your name. Amen.